guys, it's Twitter one Maxwell here and welcome to another edition of TNA Making an Impact. Um, I'm booking this show as we've just had the um, spoilers I suppose from the tapings of a, a brand new era of Impact Wrestling. Um, TNA, the name, seems to be no more. Uh, they're now under ownership again it seems by the likes of Jeff Jarrett, by the likes of Bruce Pritchard back there and uh, Dutch Mantel as well. So a lot of um, People returning behind the scenes, a lot of new wrestlers um, debuting in the company, a lot of returnees as well. If you've read any of the spoilers, won't give out names just in case you want to remain spoiler free. So interesting times for TNA, and definitely seems to be going a completely different way from the way we booked the company. But it is what it is, we'll continue to keep going the way we are, and to say we'll head on in our successful run to Bin for Glory. But we're four weeks away from, or sorry, five weeks away from Hard Justice. So hopefully put on a stellar pay-per-view for you guys there. As I say, this is the aftermath of last night's um, Destination X, or a couple of nights ago it would be in game, Destination X. So hopefully a good show here and starts putting us in the right direction for Hard Justice. Because of course you've got Hard Justice, the September pay-per-view, which I can't remember off the top of my head. And then, Burn for Glory. So we will kick on with the show. Here is another episode of TNA Impact. So we start the show, the champ Fergal Devitt comes down to the ring, he managed to retain his championship last night against Shibata, Shibata is unbeaten run, is over, he's no longer the undefeated national champion, he still is the national champ, but he isn't unbeaten, so he's just saying next in the line is AJ Styles, AJ comes out, he says he was the main man around here years ago, he's going to be the main man in 2017. And it's going to be a matter of time before he beats Devitt. Mike Bennett and Brian Cage come out. They say, enough of this crap about the World Championship. It's going to be a moment in time before it will be Mike Bennett's champion anyway. But they want their tag titles back. And they say if they have to kick the crap out of Devitt to make sure they get a title shot, they'll do so. But this sees the likes of Drew Galloway and Samoa Joe. They come out. They just say, you know, we're good friends of Fergal Devitt. We'll back him up. We're looking for some fights. So, you know, if you guys want to, you know, do anything, we'll happily fight you. This leads to two matches being booked for later on in the night. Uh, he's going to see Virgil Devitt team up with Drew Galloway against Mike Bennett and Brian Cage. And also, we should see AJ Styles in action as well. So, decent start to the show. B plus 85. So, we're doing well from our um, entertainment point of view. Our segments, our in-ring stuff is pretty good. Uh, promos, highlight reels, those stuff is all getting good ratings. So happy with that. We start off with the Tag Team Championships in action. Uh, as the champions, the BC, who just won it last night. And they had a match that had decent wrestling, but it didn't have much heat. And it saw Nick and Matt Jackson, the Young Bucks, the BC, defeat Mandrews and DJ Zema Ion in 8 minutes and 2. When Matt Jackson defeated Mandrews by pinfall with a moonsault, thus making the first defense of their championships. A C64, the match at the crowd hotter. It was a great performance from both of the Young Bucks there into the 70s. The ex division athletes, not so much. No skill improvements, but a good gain of momentum for the champs, champs in their first title defence. On to the X division now, and it was a decent matchup. We saw TJ Perkins team up with Trevor Lee, and they defeated Jay Lethal and Spud in 819 when Trevor Lee defeated Spud by pinfall. In terms of the ring performance, Jay Lethal, far better than anyone else. Spud was a weak link. You can see they were slowly getting, as I say, Perkins over to a good level. Trevor Lee will follow in the future. And a C65 is a good matchup here for the competitors involved. Trevor Lee with low morale. A few negatives, but I'm not too disheartened by that. It's a, it's a benchmark to follow from. Next up, we'll get a hype video. Just promoting the American Wolves. Obviously, we've had a bit of a situation where obviously they are no longer the champs these days, they're kind of like stuck in this little rut at the moment and it's just, you know, hyping, you know, they're still a team and they're going to take any little comers on in the future in a bid to get the championships back, so D plus 53. We then had a terrible match that saw Jesse continue his great run of wins with a win over Caleb Conley in 2.45 with a stunner, E plus 35, it killed the crowd a little bit, but the build up of Jesse Goddard's continues. After this we've got a hype video promoting that Mickey James will be returning to the company 
um, in this game. She'd been signed for a while, but she had um, maternity leave. She is back, and she will be in action soon. That was a C-54, so Mickey James will be back very shortly. But then about in the knockouts division, it saw decent wrestling, but not a lot of heat. And it saw Rosemary defeat Gail Kim in 7.39 with an Olympic Slam. A D-plus 52, another good win for the champ. She's really stepping up now, defeating Gail Kim. Some good ratings there. But overall, you know, just building up this full division and making everyone look competitive. Speaking of which, Chris Jericho, fresh off his defeat last night, decides, you know, he's going to host the Chris Jericho Reel of Highlights, just because I can't take the highlight reel name. Uh, his guests are obviously Becky Knox and Britannia Knight, who had this little bit of a, an argument last night at the pay-per-view. So what happens is they just talk about, obviously, both of their histories in the business. Britannia claiming that Becky's jealous of her, and then both of them descend into a brawl and destroy the Chris Jericho Reel of Highlights. So B-72, getting some proper heat into the storyline between these two. Crowd got hotter, Jericho comes across well. And we are going to build up a big match up down the line between Britanni and Becky. Next up, we obviously had the debut of Doomsday last night joining Abyss, and they were in an extremely short match that saw them destroy the Mac and Moose connection in 509 when Doomsday defeated Willie Mac with a chokeslam, missed a weak link, a C60. Doomsday and Abyss with better performances here. We did try and build Mac and Moose up, but at the end of the day, there's only so many tag teams we have in this division, so. They unfortunately had to be the script goats here. A couple of negatives here for both teams. Worse seems to be with Moose. I think it might be a case where we might look to write them off if he's going to continue to get negative crowd reactions. Poor psychology and poor selling. After this, we have Matt and Jeff, and they've just basically said so he caught us by surprise by bringing in Doomsday, but this isn't over. The Hardys will be back. And they will be ready for a complete war with Doomsday and Abyss. So just barely see what saying. You know, they caught them off guard last night. But they will be back. That is a beep 83 great promo from Matt and Jeff Hardy. The storyline gaining heat. Next up, it was a bout that had some decent wrestling. But didn't have much heat. And it saw Ricochet defeat Eli Drake in 7.37 with a diving double knee drop. C61. Again, just making Ricochet look like a million bucks, giving him a good victory. Eli Drake playing good cannon fodder. And a bit of momentum gained for King of Flight. We have a promo with AJ Styles. He's just basically saying it's finally his time. You know, Devitt can be champion as long as he wants to to this. But as soon as these two compete at the pay-per-view, you know, it's going to be a case of he is going to become champion again. And he is going to be the man that runs the place. So A94, AJ with a solid promo there. He takes on Drew Galloway and it was a great heat in the matchup. And good wrestling and it saw AJ defeat Drew in 12.33 with the Styles Clash. Which was a B-72. So I got it wrong, it seems like Drew is not in the main event, it's some more Joe. Overall, great matchup there considering it was awkward and it, was a, oh, it wasn't a clicking between them. It means basically, you know, if they, these two did work, they'd be producing probably a B-plus match. So a 61 for Drew, a 70 for AJ. Keeps AJ looking strong going at that main event. And it gives Drew a good bit of spotlight sharing it with AJ. But then have basically Brian Cage and Mike Bennett saying, you know, the BC are lucky they're champs. They had a minor blip last night. But they're going to show they're going to win tonight. And they're going to become champions again of the tag team division. B-73. They also talk about the main event match tonight. And that main event match had great wrestling and good heat. And it saw Feral Devitt and Samoa Joe defeat Mike Bennett and Brian Cage in 18.25 when Mike Bennett was counted out when fighting Fergal Devitt. So Devitt carried the match. Devitt does get the win over, as I say, Mike Bennett. However, Mike Bennett's protected with a count out loss. But the B-82 is a good rating. Excellent chemistry between the former tag champs. Good performances from Joe, Devitt and Mike Bennett. And yeah, Brian Cage told up his own as well. So Brian Cage performed skill improvement. Overall, the champ gets the win. But what does it mean going forward for Samoa Joe? And what does it mean going forward for the tandem of Mike Bennett 
and Brian Cage. Show as always, B81 knocks out the park, increasing popularity in 23 regions as we continue on the slow little run that should see us as a national champion, a ch uh, national company even, very soon. Keely Ray is going to stay with ICW. PWG have continued the signing of Chris Hero. And we are bringing in, as a manager, Raven. And possibly Ray Wyatt. However unlikely though. But a uh, few things here. Pete Dunn is leaving RPW. He is signed with TNA, so Pete Dunn is in the building. Bobby Roode's contract is up in a month. I'm actually going to let Bobby Roode go, I think. I don't have anything for him. Good bit of overness and stuff, but really what has he done for us lately? Nothing. Robbie's returned to the company. Spud's unhappy. AJ Styles likes Ricochet, so I might push him forward. And a 5.83 might be our best TV rating. And in times like this, sometimes you just have to be a bit Adventurous, we are offering a deal out the park for Bray Wyatt, or Wyndham Rotunda, I should say, if we can bring him in. One, it's got a lot of popularity going for him, but two, it's someone that can just take this company again to the next level. So hopefully we can steal him, paying big bucks, but we've got money in the bank, we're making good profit, and it's these kind of signings that will take us to higher lengths when we get to the national level. We'll just put Pete Dunne in as an enhancement talent just now, although he'll probably get, as I say, a push over the time in the X Division. But in terms of size, close. We're so close. Midwest is over. Southeast is over. Puerto Rico is over. So that's at least three of the eight that we need to get. A couple of 64s, 63s and 61s. We should be there by I burn for glory if I'm honest. So as always guys, thank you for watching, it's deeply appreciated. If you enjoyed the show, if you give it a little thumbs up, it's always appreciated. Any comments, shares as well, deeply appreciated. Um, if you have any comments on this save, on your own saves, please let me know how you're getting on. What do you think as well about TNA's change back to Jeff Jarrett and Co. owning the company? Do you feel about a good thing? Do you feel about a bad thing? Are there any of the names you've seen linked in the spoilers? Who are you happy who's back? Do you feel there's anyone... But um, his debut that could cause an impact, or fun intended in, Impact Wrestling, or do you think it's just a case of, it's another change in ownership, but likely it's going to suffer. But as I say, thanks always guys for watching, you can get the game as always on the Grey Dog Software for, uh, website, with a lot of information on the forums regarding mods, graphics and more advice, and you can watch some more YouTube stuff. From more bookers and some written stuff as well. The first stuff on the Fantasy Bookers subreddit. A lot of great talents here. Definitely check them out. But as always, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time as we are on the road to hard justice. Bye bye.